A blessed Holy Week to you and a blessed Palm Sunday. Today is our celebration of the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And I hope that you are able to find some way to worship Christ our King today, whether it be a procession through your own home, offering prayers around your table. I pray that this is a time when you know Christ's presence with you. I am going to read a, a copy of our gospel for this Sunday from the Liturgy of the Palms. It's actually what I've chosen is a little bit longer uh, than what we use regularly in our procession. Um, I'm taking a little license with the readings. And then I'm going to offer my own uh, sermon for today. It's also the text of the sermon is also on our website. You can find it on the under the sermons page. And I am going to use my notes. I hope not to refer to them too much, but they are helpful um, for me to make sure that I am able to say and share with you my experience of this gospel today. So here we go. A gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew. This is chapter 21, verses 1 to 17. When Jesus and the disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their clo cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read, Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. He left them, went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there gospel according to Matthew. When this whole quarantine for COVID-19 started around the middle of March, I had a lot of time to think. And when I have a lot of time to think, I often ponder the gospels and my imagination tends to run wild. I think a lot about their experiences of the world and what it might have to teach me about how God works in the world now. And so I found myself uh, in my home, quarantined away from community, and remembering and thinking about the disciples in the upper room after Jesus has died. I think what I realized was that I've always had a little bit of um, disdain for them in that time, that I've always thought they were a little cowardly for hiding up in that upper room. And what I realized or began to learn in my imaginings is that, of course, the disciples were afraid. And of course, they yearned 
to be shut away, afraid from all the dangers of the world, and that Christ, the resurrected Christ, was calling them out into the world. And so I bring that sense of empathy with me to today's gospel, this uh, beginning of Holy Week, these moments that are leading us to that upper room when the disciples experience the resurrected Christ. I've wondered a lot about what this experience, this entry into Jerusalem and the days and time and moments that come later, what meaning they had for the crowd and the disciples. Today, Palm Sunday, is, like I said, the beginning of Holy Week for us. And we have a, a lot of traditions around Palm Sunday here in the Episcopal Church. Uh, we like to process into our churches. Every church where I've had the um, blessing and privilege of worshiping and serving has tried to discern how can we do that best, right? Um, we like to parade around our spaces um, if we have them. And here at Trinity in Danville, what we do is we gather outside in the front door if it's not raining <laughs> or snowing. And um, we stand outside in the cold and the wind because it's usually cold. And we gather and we have our whole liturgy of the palms. We bless our palms, we raise them high in the air and say, Hosanna to the highest, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then our organist starts playing all glory, laud, and honor, and we begin to process into the church. And it's just, um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful worship experience. I often wonder with the people who are driving by on Main Street, because we're right here on Main Street, what they're thinking about what we're doing. Maybe they don't even notice us, but I hope that they don't think that we're doing a reenactment. Uh, that I hope what they see is the church telling the story of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Now, Matthew is quite clear about uh, the people's expectations of the Messiah and how Jesus fulfills them. And he's consistently saying in his gospel that Jesus comes to fulfill the law and the prophets. And he uses citations from scripture um, throughout his gospel to remind us of the fulfillment that Jesus brings. And he does that again in today's gospel. There are many moments where he's quoting he, the Hebrew scriptures in the words and mouths of the crowd or in Jesus's own words. And so today we have this fulfillment of Jesus coming as the king of Israel. Now, the people had a lot of expectations about who that king was and how that king would be and what the result of that kingdom would look like. That Israel would be reunited as, the, as a kingdom of Israel with power and might. And it would be God's kingdom. Now, Jesus, it turns out, isn't what they expect him to be. It turns out he's a different kind of king. He's a king of mercy and grace, of feeding the hungry and healing the sick. Jesus' dominion doesn't come in power or might or with force. Jesus' dominion is easy. The burden is light. It invites the people to servanthood and humility and grace. Now, the reality of Jerusalem at the time in ancient days is that it was a fairly big city, about 25,000 people. And so, um, honestly, a parade like what we hear about today probably wouldn't have drawn very much attention. In fact, I often wonder if the authorities and the scribes had sort of just like pshawed this moment or um, invited people to look away, look away, if in fact it would have gone unnoticed. And maybe the, this, the moments of this coming week would not have been unfolded the way that they do. And yet Jesus is very intentional and draws attention to himself in these moments. He goes into the temple and turns the tables over and invites the people to uh, acknowledgement of how they're acting and who they've become in the face of God, in the, in the very place where they know that and believe God resides among them. 
And so Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't let people not pay attention to his work because his ministry is so vital to our understanding of how the kingdom of God is enacted among us and in the world. And Jesus knows the end of the story. Jesus knows how this is all going to turn out. He's already told his disciples three times that when he goes to Jerusalem, he will suffer, be put on trial, die on the cross, and then rise in three days. And so Jesus knows that things are going to get a whole lot worse before they get better. And Jesus also knows that things will be so much better. So fast forward to today. <laughs> I have a lot of expectations of Holy Week. It is one of my most favorite weeks of the church year. I love all of our liturgies and the ways that we gather in intentional prayer. I love the foot washing and the stripping of the altar and the vigil that happens on Thursday night and keeping watch with Christ in the garden. Gathering at noon on Good Friday to remember and worship Christ on the cross. All leading up to that just incredible celebration of Easter morning. When we cry together, Christ is risen. I also have a lot of expectations of what the kingdom of God looks like here among us now. I don't believe that the kingdom of God is isolation or heightened poverty and suffering. I believe that the kingdom of God is healing, that it is food for the hungry, that it is community for the lonely. I believe that the kingdom of God is a pandemic, if you will, a pandemic of healing and wholeness, food for the hungry, community for the isolated and lonely. And so it feels like everything this year has been uh, turned upside down and inside out, which maybe is the whole point. That all the events that happened this week demand our attention so that we may know Christ is King and among us. I've worked really hard this week to try to avoid um, all that comes with Holy Week. But the church calendar demands attention. It says, this is the week. This is the time when we walk with Jesus to Jerusalem, to the cross, and to the tomb. And so this week we will practice. We will practice Holy Week. We will make our cries today, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Today, despite our circumstances, we declare Christ is King. And then this week we will practice. We will say our prayers. We will gather for our meals. We will sit with candles and remember Jesus in the garden. We will walk all the way to the cross and offer our prayers to the crucified Christ. And we will, we will say our Alleluia's on Easter Sunday. It may not be what we expect, may not be what we want, and it will happen because despite our circumstances, Christ is still King. And as we go through these practices, we will experience Christ among us. My prayer is that for those who are hungry or isolated or lonely or suffering, that they will find solidarity in Christ's suffering, and it will be a blessing for them. And my prayer is that for those who find that they have a full table 
a blessed community around them, and plenty enough to share. That Christ's suffering will be an invitation to them of servanthood. I pray that we will know the kingdom of God among us and that it will bring healing to the suffering, comfort to the afflicted, honor for all persons. That as we practice walking with Jesus in Jerusalem and to the cross and to the empty tomb, we will know Christ is with us. My prayer is that Christ is our King and that the kingdom of God will come very near to us and that we will come very close to Christ. Palm Sunday blessings to you. Peace be with you.